Welcome to All Grown Up Now, Tales of a Checkered Past. I'm Kenneth D. King, podcasting from my studio near Union Square in New York City. This podcast is an evolution of the tale, All Grown Up Now, a friendship in three acts. This is season two, and it's called Tales of a Checkered Past. It's a collection of short stories from my salad days on up to the present. In each podcast, another self-contained story will be presented. These podcasts will be broadcast bi-weekly, so you get two a month. Enjoy. Before I was self-employed, I worked in window display. I started first at Macy's, then I went to a store in San Francisco called The Emporium. This one was in Stonestown. So for episode 56, I call it Mannequin with the Gun, 1985. One of the reasons I'm self-employed is that I'm not a good soldier. If I'm working for someone I respect or someone who I can learn from, I'm all good. But if that's not the case, well, that's when the trouble begins. When I quit my job at Macy's to go to the Emporium in Stonestown, it was regarded by everyone as a step down. Now, you can work and display at the Emporium and go to Macy's. That was a step up. But one didn't go from display at Macy's to the Emporium. It wasn't done. At Macy's, I had worked for Crazy Carmel and repeatedly injured him because I had no respect for him. When I wanted to build a business, I realized I needed to not commute that two hours a day, which brought me to apply at the Emporium. When interviewing with the main guy in the office downtown, he asked that question, Why do you want to work for the Emporium? I gave him some boilerplate about challenge and opportunity and all that. Not believing me, he leaned in on his elbows and said, No, really. Why do you want to work for the Emporium? I want to start a business, and I can't afford the time or commute to my job now. When my business gets going, I'm out of here. A little stunned at my honesty, he replied, Well, okay then. When can you start? I had to interview with the display manager at Stonestown as well. It was a guy named Michael. When I saw him, I recognized him immediately. Michael had interviewed with Carmel at Macy's. I remembered him because he was so dazzlingly good-looking. He was like a cross between Tom Hanks and Dennis Quaid with a hairy chest and mustache. Carmel didn't hire him, so Michael went to the Emporium. They made him a display manager. Such were the standards at the Emporium. On the flip side, Michael was a little dazzled by me. I had worked at Macy's, so he hired me. (laughs) A decision that he came to regret. After the 90-day probationary period, I began to cause trouble. On day 91 is when I started calling him Mikey. The first time I misbehaved was because I wanted the China Glass Silver Department to display. The guy who was doing that department was named Alan. He was a swishy, but not gay, oh no, Scientologist who had crappy taste and hadn't done much window display in his past. He also thought he was smarter than everyone else. I think that was partly the Scientology. Uh Uh-huh. Anyway, he needed to change the large table display on the main corner in that department. Problem was, he hadn't a clue as to what to do. He tried to be sly about picking my brain, so I took the bait. The china pattern was a pastel, postmodern, rounded square thing. I innocently suggested that, for placemats... He should get some of the baffles that we used in the fluorescent fixtures, the ones that look like ice cube trays. He could cut them up into placemat-sized pieces and spray them matte black, which he did. So far, so good. 
He then started hemming and hawing about a centerpiece. I suggested using bamboo sticks we had in the shop. But spray and pink. An arty arrangement, that's the trick. And voila, it appeared. Ghastly. This was easier than I thought. You know, I mused, what would look really cool is to spray the silverware primer coat gray. What? Yep, he did it. I kept innocently suggesting things until it was done. About a half hour later, I heard my page. It was Mikey. Uh, Could you come down to the China department, he asked. So I did. There he stood with the manager of that department, a very short British woman named Alice who had a take-no-prisoner's demeanor. She was sputtering with fury. They were inspecting this train wreck of a display. I walked up. Hey, Mikey, what do you need? What do you think of this display? He looked a little panicked. Awful, I said. See? She sputtered. I want it gone now. Mikey turned to me and asked, What do you suggest? Well, the holidays are almost here, so we should use the Spode China and do a really lavish holiday table display. Right you are, said Alice. Just get rid of this now! What do you need to do it? Mikey asked. Get me ten yards of red satin, I demanded. But do you want something fabulous? Do I have to ask? And I want this department. And by the end of the day, I had that department, Al and Quentin protest, and they had a fabulous table that made Alice practically do handsprings. Doing display at the Emporium was like shooting rabbits with a big game gun. If they had a display, they were happy. I felt like I was phoning it in, so I needed something to keep me from getting bored. Besides, Mikey was, well... Stupid. Good looking, no doubt about it. Damn. But stupid. Which brings out my worst impulses. If they are good looking, they goddamn better be smart. Otherwise, I just can't help myself. Good looking people have an edge, and I want to even the score. As it was, every Monday, I would make Mikey's Sunday tea dance hangover worse. I had a sweater. Day glow triangles, really busy. One Monday, I just happened to be wearing it, and as we were sitting at his desk, he kept shielding his eyes. Finally, he looked at me and said, Can you turn that sweater down? It's making me seasick. So I wore it every Monday after that. To entertain myself, I started making little, well, shall we say gaffes when making my displays. Mikey just kept thinking I was a rock star. You know, I worked for Macy's. The gaffes started small, but since he didn't catch on, I started making them more obvious. The guys I worked with asked me what I was up to. They saw what I had done to Alan and wondered if it would be directed at them. No, I said. It's Mikey. I just want to see how far I have to go before he smacks me down. Then came the golden opportunity. Mikey called me in to discuss the prom shop in the junior department. Did I have any ideas? Of course I did. Mikey, you know that song, The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun, that Julie Brown sings? Yeah, he said suspiciously. Well, that's it. That's it? Yeah. We could cut out stars, musical notes, and guns from the styrofoam to pin on the wall. Then we could dress the mannequin that turquoise Jessica McClintock 50s number with Ray-Bans, loads of jewelry, and a pistol. Mikey sat there. He looked panicked. Sensing that he might not go for it, I dejectedly said, Well, we would have done it at Macy's. He took the bait. And I set the hook. Then I set to work to make it happen. Now, as an aside, 
that song was funny in the 1980s precisely because people at the time thought it was absolutely ludicrous that a prom queen would shoot up a homecoming. Different times then. A couple of days later, everything was ready. Early in the morning, I pull it all out and I installed it on the junior's floor. Pinned to the wall were the cutout stars, musical notes, and pistols, which I painted pink. When the mannequin got on the platform, I was done. I figured it would last about 15 minutes, so I went back to the display shop and sat by the phone. It lasted three days. In those three days, there were pickets, there were petitions, there were calls for my head on a platter, and general conniption fits. Mikey defended it. They would have done it at Macy's, he protested. I was called to remove the gun from the mannequin. But funny. Nobody clued in on the pink revolvers pinned to the wall. They remained. Only the girls working in the junior department were in on the joke. After this, Mikey was sent away to the Siberia store. The next manager we had was named David. I called him Davy. A few days after he started, he and I were chatting about this and that. Then he got quiet. Tell me about the prom mannequin with the gun, he asked. Oh, that? Yeah, it was a big damn deal. Everyone in the company heard about it. Well, what do you want to know about it? I asked sweetly. Why did you do it? I gave him a cool look. In my best Barbara Stanwyck voice, I replied, "'Cause I'm bored, Davy. I'm bored. "'If you ever do that to me, you'll be in big trouble,' he shot back. I looked down my nose at him and said, "'Davy, you won't know what I'm up to until it blows up in your face.'" And the beautiful thing was I never had to do anything because he was always waiting for the other shoe to drop. Time went on. I quit the Emporium and started my business. Davey was promoted to the downtown store, a job he very much wanted. What he didn't know was that the trimmers at the downtown store were referred to as trimmers behind bars. If they didn't like a manager, they would put him or her through living hell. So I kept up with all the trimmers for the Emporium, the downtown as well as the Stonetown kids. They would regale me with the latest gossip. That's when I heard the story about Davy. It seems that Davy had an idea for the windows. Now, in window display, there are certain cliches. For example, nautical for spring. Another cliche is the image of the animal skin stretched on a frame like the Native Americans did. Davy thought he had this idea, again, and he bought several acres of black vinyl to realize it. He instructed his trimmers to, as he said, cut out animal shapes. Now think about that for just a moment. His trimmers did. Actually, they put more thought into it than he did. So, they cut out animal shapes. A teddy bear, an elephant, a giraffe. You get the idea. They burn through all those acres of black vinyl. Now, if Davy had any sense of irony, this could have been great. Lacing these animal shapes to frames, well, it would turn the cliché on its head. But sadly, Davy had no sense of irony. He was last seen running from the Emporium, Ah! screaming. Pity. (laughs) 
Thanks for listening. You can get the audiobook All Grown Up Now on iTunes, Audible, and Amazon, or from my website, allgrownupnow.com. You can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. If you have any questions, you can reach me through the website allgrownupnow.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Kenneth D. King, on Facebook at Kenneth D. King Design, or on my main website, KennethDKing.com.